And because it came from a preacher over the pulpit, and because it contains a lot of acceptable truths with just enough incomprehensible mystery, you and I and millions of other Christians, billions possibly, have cheered, amen, brother. Praise be to Jesus. I mean the Father. I mean the Holy Spirit. And little Joseph, who possessing an uncanny ability to discern baloney because he was full of it himself, and having a working knowledge of the Bible that he obtained at a very young age from his parents, and adding in the angst that he felt from the division in his own home, he probably wandered home and said to himself, I wonder if I can describe God in a more clear and concise manner. And in time and with growing imagination and chutzpah, he does. And Mormonism was born. Now the historical record of Joseph Smith's descriptions of God and the gold plates are proven fictional. Uh, mythical, absolutely. And this is without question. But what about the historical record of this tradition most Christians today readily embrace that we call the Trinity? Where did it come from? Is it any more reliable than Smith's first vision concoctions? Certainly Trinity smacks much closer to the biblical truth of God, but it's the product of tradition and philosophies of man, which it is, why so many believers today readily and mindlessly embrace it and don't understand it. They do not understand what the constructs of Trinity is. We are going to open up next week's program with a shocking history of the origins of this Christian creed. Once we have exposed it for the garbage that it is, we'll compare it to the fiction Smith provided and then try to articulate a simple, easy to understand, biblical description of God. Additionally, most people who agree that Jesus is God but reject the Trinity preach what has pejoratively been labeled Sabellianism or uh, modalism. And it, it's like a thought-killing cliche. If you go and you, and you question the Trinity and you suggest another route, instantly apologists and Christian defenders of the Trinity will say, you're a modalist. And then everyone says, oh, he's a modalist. And on they go, that's just a terrible thing. Modalism taught Sabelli, he was a guy who thought back in the day that the father became the Son, and then the Son became the Holy Spirit, and that is what modalism truly is. I am not preaching modalism at all. I'm not suggesting that the Father became the Son, or the Son became the Holy Spirit. What is the best way to describe what you're understanding his view, or presenting his view to be changed to? Is it indeed a modalistic or a tritheistic uh, uh, concept? What is the best way to understand what you're I'm, presenting as his change? I've purposely held off on articulating it because uh, he wrote me that he thought it was unfair for me to comment until he had finished his series. Uh, I heard enough last night in his criticism of the Trinity that I thought it was very fair to go ahead and deal with that. Um, he sounds as if he's moving in a modalist direction. Uh, he denies the validity of that, but uh, I think he's, na he's defining modalism a bit narrowly, but I'll let him speak for himself. Uh, we'll see what okay. he says. But he, he was very explicit in talking about how God had manifested, one God had manifested himself in different ways. And he was very clear that he rejected uh, the Nicene Creed, and rejected Trinitarianism, which he said put God in a box. He was very explicit in saying that it was Iraq, that it was, uh, that his position was more rational and more biblical. And I think that's presumptuous in the extreme. Few of my accusers have ever witnessed any of these endeavors. My accusers sit back behind their keyboards or behind their cameras and they make statements of judgment upon a brother because he makes one thing and he says, listen, I don't like the word Trinity. I don't, I, I don't even accept the word Trinity. I believe God manifests himself in fire and smoke and in, a, and in flesh. And they called it modalism. They didn't even have a chance to understand what I meant. The attacks came. 
That's what this is about. So I could be heard from you and it could be put on film and the people who are watching all over the nation and parts of the, uh, of the world are able to hear that I love the Lord Jesus Christ and he is my God and King. And I'm not a modalist. I just don't believe Jesus' name was Jesus in the beginning. He adds, according to Trinitarians, modalism commits the error of confounding the persons while tritheism errs by dividing the substance. Now, at this point, I publicly admit that I am a committed modalist, uh, but refuse the Trinitarian's pejorative claims that I err by confounding the persons. Uh, as a modalist, I am a believer in the Trinity um, of representations of only one God. I believe God has represented himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in a Trinity. I believe in Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But I believe they are one God, and I discount the idea of three persons. That's where I differ, and that's where people get on my case for not being a true creedal Trinitarianism, tr tr creedal Trinitarianist who says there are three persons.